it is estimated that 90% of workplace injuries could have been prevented if personnel had worn the correct personal protective equipment and used it properly. Unfortunately, the use of personal protective equipment, or PPE, is often not understood, resulting in accidents. PPE is a vital part of minimizing the risks of accidents. The risk of serious injury can be minimized if you understand the principles of PPE safety. You can't afford not to take PPE seriously. This program covers types of PPE including head, foot, hand and arm, eye and face, hearing, body, respiratory and fall protection. We will also look at PPE risk control and maintenance and storage. Personal protective equipment, or PPE, comprises a range of clothing and equipment that is worn by personnel, contractors or visitors to reduce their exposure to workplace hazards. Let's have a look at the range of PPE that is available to protect your health. Head injuries are classified as either closed or open. A closed head injury means you have received a hard blow to the head from striking an object. An open or penetrating head injury means you are hit with an object that broke the skull and or entered the brain. Two common types of head injuries are concussion, the most common type of traumatic brain injury, and contusion, which is a bruise on the brain. Head injuries commonly result from impact from flying or falling objects, bumps and hard blows, and hair entanglement. Long hair should always be tied back or secured under headgear. In most cases, head protection will mean an industrial safety helmet. However, bump caps or an equivalent can be used in areas with particularly limited space. Head protection also includes hoods to prevent chemical splashes, hair nets and caps to keep hair from being entangled, hats to protect from the sun, and wet weather hats. Hard hats can include rims, visors, face shields, earmuffs, and may include neck and side protection. Headbands inside the helmet need to fit properly. The suspension system must be in good working order and may need to be replaced each year. Common types of foot injuries result from falling objects that may or may not be heavy, being run over by mobile plant, punctures from such items as nails and sharp metals, stubbing your toes, and contact with chemicals. Safety footwear includes safety boots with steel cap toes and slip and puncture resistant soles suitable for most general work, safety boots for use with chemicals such as steel capped rubber or wellington boots, Safety boots suitable for working with electricity that are non-conductive and anti-static. Shoe covers, spats, gaiters and leggings to protect against chemicals, welding sparks and other hazards. And shanks to go over the upper foot for additional protection. Safety footwear should be compulsory, except where there is a negligible risk of foot injury. Accidents can result from wearing poorly maintained safety footwear. For example, damaged soles can result in slips. Always make sure that your foot protection is in good condition, is kept clean and dry, and is free from defects.
Common types of hand and arm injuries are abrasions, cuts and punctures, impact blows, chemical burns, electrical burns, thermal or heat burns resulting from contact with a flame, scalding from steam or hot or molten liquids, and contact with hot objects. Cold burns, such as frostbite and skin infection and contamination. Gloves are the major form of PPE for hand and arm protection and there are also protective sleeves or gauntlets, mitts, wrist cuffs and armlets. Gloves can be made from materials such as latex, rubber, cotton, PVC, viton, stainless steel mesh, Kevlar and leather. There are a range of different types of gloves suitable for different tasks, such as gloves for working with chemicals and solvents, gloves that are cut resistant, gloves that are heat or cold resistant, gloves for work with high and low voltage electricity, gloves for working with vibrating machinery, disposable gloves, and any combination of these. When choosing gloves, always seek expert help. Advice should be sought, for example, from the manufacturer or distributor of a chemical agent or glove supplier. Always remember that if the inner surface of a glove becomes contaminated, it will not matter how much care, attention and expertise has gone into the selection process, exposure will occur. Gloves should always be dry and hold free. If gloves are wet, they should be changed with a dry pair. Common causes of eye injuries are flying objects such as bits of metal and glass, tools, particles, chemicals and harmful radiation. With just a little extra effort, it's easy to ensure that you and your co-workers won't suffer eye damage while on the job. Safety eyewear protection includes non-prescription and prescription safety spectacles, goggles, full visor face shields, welding helmets and full face respirators. A risk assessment should confirm the local hazards and the type of protective eyewear you should use. There are glass, plastic and polycarbonate safety lenses. Glass lenses can be heavy due to minimum lens thickness requirements and therefore uncomfortable, low impact resistant and are not always recommended as safety eye protection. Plastic lenses, including polycarbonate lenses, offer better impact resistance than glass, are lighter weight, can be coated for anti-fog and anti-scratch and can be made in your corrective prescription. It is essential to check that the right level of protection is being used for each specific task. A full visor face shield provides protection for not just the eyes, but also the face and throat as well. Protective eyewear with a UV filter and tinting will protect your eyes from the sun's ultraviolet rays, which can cause a significant amount of eye damage. Contact lenses or prescription spectacles are not eye protective devices and wearing them does not reduce the requirement for eye and face protection. If you wear prescription spectacles or contact lenses, you must ensure that all PPE is compatible and fits comfortably. Failure to wear hearing protection in noisy areas can result in hearing loss. Damage to your hearing is painless, may be permanent and there is no cure. Hearing damage can be caused by very loud peak noise levels and exposure to general noise 
over longer periods of time. Effective safety hearing protection includes earplugs, including ear bands and ear muffs, that are rated for specific noise levels. There are also ear muffs that are integrated with PPE, such as hard hats. When choosing ear protection, there are a number of factors to keep in mind. Your ear protection must be adequate for the level and frequency of sound in your work environment. Wearing ear protectors over long hair, spectacle frames or jewellery may reduce the effectiveness of the protection. When using earplugs, it is important to insert them correctly. Firstly, make sure your hands are clean. Dirty earplugs will cause ear infections. Roll the plug into a light cylindrical shape. Reach around the back of your head and gently pull back the outer part of your ear to straighten your ear canal. Insert the plug well into your ear canal with your other hand. Hold the plug in firmly and allow it time to expand and block the noise. Aim to get three quarters of the length of the plug into the canal. Check your earplugs regularly to ensure they are not working loose. With earmuffs, note which way they are meant to be worn. Oval shaped cups are meant to be worn so that the oval is vertical and not like this. Brush as much hair as possible away from the ears and make sure the ears fit right inside the cups and are not pressed against the head. Adjust the headband so it evenly takes the weight of the cups and holds them firmly in position. Run your fingers around the cushions to make sure there is a good seal against your head. Earmuffs can be used over earplugs for additional protection. Earplugs and earmuffs should be cleaned before and after a shift. Ear protection should not be shared with others as this can lead to ear infections. Don't take hearing protection off in a noisy environment. Remember, a one-off peak noise or long-term exposure to general noise over 85 decibels may damage your hearing. Common types of body protection include safety overalls, non-porous full body suits, heavy and light duty aprons, lab coats, hot and cold environment protection, high visibility vests or jackets, and sunscreen to protect from UV radiation. Sleeves, knee pads and elbow pads are all available for extra protection when required. Overalls are required to protect people when engaged in dirty tasks and may be cotton or disposable. Aprons may be made from rubber, PVC or leather and may be heavy or lightweight. They are required when extra body protection is needed, for example welding and handling chemicals. Appropriate clothing, for example insulation or water resistance, should be used when workers are exposed to cold or wet environments. Cooling vests or breathable fabric may be used to minimize heat stress when working in hot environments. When working outdoors or in the sun, water-resistant SPF 30 plus sunscreen should be applied before a shift and reapplied every two hours. When working close to machinery, you must wear close-fitting and close-fastened garments that cannot get tangled in machinery. Body protection must be sized properly to prevent tripping, tearing, seam parting or the restriction of movement. When conducting welding or flame cutting or where there is a potential risk of fire, body protection should be fire resistant and or flame retardant. Materials made with polyester blends should usually be avoided in these situations. Anti-static overalls may be required in some industries. Common examples of respiratory hazards include particulates and dusts, hazardous fumes and vapors, gases, 
and oxygen deficient atmospheres. These hazards can be present from solvents, specialized paints, the joining and cutting of metals, welding fumes, dusts from wood or plaster, solder flux, hazardous chemicals, and confined spaces. Respiratory protective equipment or RPE includes air purifying respirators used to filter dust, fumes and gas and air supplying respirators used in more hazardous situations. Air purifying respirators include particle filtering face masks, half masks and full face masks. Different types of filters can be used with each type of mask depending on the hazards present. Respiratory equipment with eye protection may be required when working near smoke and noxious or poisonous particles and fumes which can cause severe eye irritation. Air supplying respirators include airline systems, self-contained systems and closed circuit breathing apparatus. Before using an air supplied or self-contained breathing apparatus, users must be trained and competent, physically fit, medically tested and fit tested to wear this equipment. Falls from height remain one of the single biggest causes of disability, injury and death at work. Assessments and control of risk are required even when the potential fall distance is less than 2 meters. Fall arrest equipment should be designed and used to reduce the possibility of injury if a worker falls. Fall arrest systems are used where workers are required to carry out jobs near an unprotected edge. Safety belts and harnesses, lanyards, safety lines and safety attachments for ladder work can be used. Vertical and self-retracting anchorage lines can be used for work performed from bosun's chairs and ladders. Collective fall arrest systems include nets and airbags. Only people suitably trained and supervised should install and use fall arrest systems. PPE only protects the wearer, it does not remove the hazard. It is for this reason that PPE is considered the control measure of last resort. Elimination, substitution, isolation controls, engineering controls and administrative controls should be put in place before personal protective equipment is utilized. But how do you know what type of PPE is suitable? Every time you do a task, you should assess the PPE requirements. The PPE must be appropriate for the risks and conditions where it is to be used, take into account the ergonomic requirements and state of health of the person wearing it, fit the wearer correctly if necessary after adjustments, either prevent or control the risk involved without increasing the overall risk and be used in conjunction with other control measures. Material 